<laughs> Welcome back to my apartment kitchen once again. This week's genius recipe is for something that I really love to order at restaurants, but it has a little ingredient swap so that it's really accessible and you can make it at home anytime. Like right now. Nice. Do you want to do it again? No. <laughs> <laughs> So you've probably seen appetizers like this at restaurants before, shishito peppers that have been grilled or blistered in a pan. They're usually about that big and they're like showered in flaky salt. They've got lemon juice and other seasonings on them. They're really delicious. They feel very festive. They are not always easy to find. That's where these come in. These are green bell peppers. You can find them at pretty much any grocery store anytime. I feel like they are the least loved, most forgotten of the bell peppers. So they're often there even when other things are gone. But that's simply because we have not been cooking them like we would want to cook shishitos. So this is how I think it's best to cut a pepper, but I would love to know if you have any tips for me. Basically, I just cut out the stem area. And then if there is no stem to grab onto, I have to fish around a little bit and just pull it out because it has all of those seeds and all of this extra white spongy stuff. And then you, oh wait, actually, you can shake out some excess seeds and then get this guy out of the way. And then cut it into roughly one inch wide sections that will resemble a shishito pepper. Like that. The size of a little shishito pepper. You can shake out the rest of the seeds as you go or don't, they're fine. So what green peppers are lacking though is heat and some flavor compared to shishito peppers. So that's where the genius behind this recipe, Michelle Humes figured out both the cooking technique and the seasoning that will make these bell peppers the best that they can be and also uncannily similar to shishito peppers. Before I get to cooking, because that's gonna happen really, really fast, I wanna give Michelle a call so that she can tell us more about this recipe. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Hi Kristen. So good to see you. It's so nice to see you. Thank you for having me. So what is the story behind this recipe? How did you decide that you were going to do this and how did it end up in the book? I grew up in Hong Kong and the way that green peppers are cooked in uh, stir fries, like very often with beef and black bean sauce, it's a very like common combination. Um, they would be flash sauteed and just have black blistered spots on the skin and like barely cooked on the inside. And like, that's how I like them. Mm. Um, so this kind of borrows from that. Um, and the, the, the Chinese technique that, that gives rise to that, you know, people often refer to the breath of the wok, mm. uh, wok hei. Um, I, don't, I don't love using that term because I feel like it sounds a little too mystical. Mm -hmm. like, I think what it really means is like super high heat. Like <laughs> when, once you start talking about like breath of the wok, I think people get, you know, intimidated or they think it has to be a wok. It doesn't, it just, you know, like a good pan that can conduct heat and like a high flame and you just do it quickly. Um, and the green pepper won't have time to develop any of the bitterness, but will, it will have all of the smokiness that I love mm -hmm. um, that mimic the shishito. I really love this one in particular, but I've made a few of the other recipes and love them as well. So I um, really hope that the book does well and it gets out into a lot more homes because I think people do need noodle soup right now. Do you have your book nearby so that you can- I do, I do. It, it just so happens, what do you know? The Noodle Soup Oracle by me, um, words and pictures, yes. And the, the pictures you painted with watercolors? Mm -hmm. Um, I often work in watercolor, but these are all digital, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I didn't realize that. So this is digital wow. tablet, but you know, it, it's it, it's every bit as intricate, but just on a on a digital tablet. Yeah. You can do everything, I think. Um, I, I can't smell so well, but I can do I can do a range of other things. <laughs> um, yeah, like I'm just I am very very passionate about noodle soup and I wanted to get at it from all possible angles. Um, should, I, should I continue to hold this? <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to. 
And just to clarify for anyone watching, you lost your sense of smell because of COVID-19, correct? Yes, I, I, I came down with COVID-19 nearly two months ago and a few days into it, um, I completely lost my sense of smell and then most of my taste with them. Um, but I, I've since made a, a complete recovery in every other way. Like I feel very healthy. There's just this kind of, this, this wall that has descended between me and food. Well, I'm so happy to hear that you're feeling healthy and that your smell and taste is coming back. What have you been eating? What have you been cooking to feed yourself when you don't have taste and smell? I would love to say noodle soup. That would be a great answer, but I'm so emotional about that food that knowing that I won't be able to experience it fully like makes me want to not engage with it at all. Um, so, you know, Noodle soup, whether instant or slow cooked, would have been perfect for a time like this, except I just, I emotionally can't do it. But hopefully soon. Yes, it is coming back. Good, I'm so glad to hear it. And I hope you continue feeling better and can taste all of these soups again soon. Thanks. Before I actually cook this, I'm gonna give you a quick primer on the ingredients that are going in. A neutral oil, because that has the highest smoke point and it's going to smoke less than olive oil when you're using super high heat in a wok or skillet like this. Then you throw your peppers in with a little salt. After a couple minutes, you put in some rice vinegar for acid and toasted sesame oil, which I do not have. It would give a nutty savory depth, um, but it'll still be delicious without that. Then you yank them off the heat and put on flaky salt and for heat and flavor, shichimi togarashi, which is a Japanese seven spice blend. I think I'll put a bubble with all of those seven spices, but basically the first time I made this, I didn't have shichimi togarashi in my house. And so I just kind of riffed and there's citrus peel in it. So I used a little orange zest. There is sesame seeds. So I threw in some sesame seeds. There's some spice, pepper. So I threw in some cayenne pepper. So Whatever you need to do to kind of mimic that is gonna be delicious. Basically, all you need is a little bit of acid, salt, and something spicy. But if you have these, that's great too, obviously. <laughs> if you have the ingredients, that's great. You can make the recipe. <laughs> Basically, I was trying to just get them all in a single layer and get as many of their sides touching the bottom of the pan as possible. And then I want to kind of leave them alone so that they can actually brown and blister and get really delicious. Mm. Oh yeah, that. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm going to give them a stir and let them color a little bit more on the other side. Let me get close up. Oh. When these are done, as Michelle says, the skin will be blistered, the flesh will be just soft. So not firm and crunchy, but not totally mushy. Be careful, this is gonna steam. Now they get their flaky salt. And that shichimi togarashi. As much as you want. Hmm. That is delicious. And I never would have thought that bell peppers could taste that exciting, but the charring in the pan has really brought out some of their sweetness and their bitterness. They still have a little bit of crunch, so they're not mushy. Um, the acid from the vinegar has really brought them to life as well as the big chunks of salt and the spicy 
sashimi togarashi. I could just eat this whole platter. I think I might after we're done filming. I can have a little bit. Oh, thanks. <laughs> For more genius recipes like this every week, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel and get Michelle's book so that you will have endless delicious noodle soup combinations and mix and match goodies like this one. I will see you next week.